I'm going to continue with quadratic reciprocity. This one will be on the Legendre symbol in Euler's criterion. So the setup that we had in the past with quadratic reciprocity was that we had a modulus m, and then we had an integer a between 1 and m minus 1, and we defined a to be a quadratic residue mod m if there was a solution to x squared congruent to a mod m. So we are going to change things up a little bit for this video, and we are going to just let our modulus be a prime p instead of any integer m. So same setup, positive prime p, a is between 1 and p minus 1, and a is a quadratic residue mod p if x squared congruent to a mod p has a solution. So the reason that we use a prime is because we saw in the last video that finding the list of all quadratic residues by listing squares is very tedious, and we want to find some shortcuts for that. So one thing that is known is that if we have a modulus m, we know some things about the quadratic residues mod m based on the primes that are in the prime factorization of m. So if we are able to establish information about whether or not something is a quadratic residue mod a prime p and the p divides m, we know something about m. So we will define the Legendre symbol, Legendre symbol, um, a on p. So this is not a fraction. It looks like a fraction, but this is the Legendre symbol um, right here. So this is a on p. And a on p is equal to 1 if a is a quadratic residue mod p. And it's equal to negative 1 if it's a quadratic non-residue mod p. So Euler's criterion is a nice shortcut because it tells us that if we look at a to the p minus 1 over 2 and we reduce that mod p, then we get the value of the Legendre symbol. So a to the p minus 1 over 2 will be either plus or minus 1 mod p, and it will be the value of the Legendre symbol. So evaluating that um, congruence will actually tell us if something, if a is a quadratic residue or not modulo p. For small primes, we automatically think, oh, that's not so bad. So something like, is 2 a quadratic residue mod 7? In this case, we can directly compute it. So 2 to the p minus 1 over 2 is 2 to the 6 over 2, just 2 cubed, which is 8. And 8 is congruent to 1 mod 7. So by Euler's criterion, what we have is that 2 on 7 is 1, which means that 2 is definitely a quadratic residue modulo 7. So that calculation was straightforward, but when you are doing exponentiation modulo anything really, not just a prime, um, you want to try to be clever about it because numbers raised to a large power, or really to not even that large of a power, become quite large quite quickly. So here's one where we can be kind of tricky about what we're doing. We want to know if 29 is a square mod 31. So is 29 a quadratic residue mod 31? So step one is to compute a to the p minus 1 over 2 mod p, but we don't want to go ahead and compute 29 to the 15 and then reduce that mod p because that would be a very large number. So we observe that 29 is congruent to negative 2 mod 31. So we can just replace 29 to the 15 with negative 2 to the 15 mod 31. So this is what we'll evaluate instead, negative 2 to the 15 mod 31. And I want you to observe now that 2 to the 5th is equal to 32. 
and 32 is equal to 1 mod 31. So instead of doing 2 to the 15, we're going to break that up into 2 to the 15 is the same as 2 to the 5th times 2 to the 5th times 2 to the 5th, which is equal to 1 times 1 times 1, and then also that negative in front. This ends up being negative 1 mod 31. So we have done this calculation. We've gotten the answer of negative 1. And by Euler's criterion, this tells us that 29 on 31 is negative 1. So it tells us that 29 is a quadratic non-residue mod p. That was actually my, you know, next visual, but I already stated it. So step three is relate this back to the definition of a on p and you use that to determine whether or not a, which in this case is 29, is a quadratic residue modulo p, which in this case is 31. And we conclude that it is not.